These are rappers who got caught snitching. And first up, we have Boston Richie, because in December 2013, a woman reported her Honda stolen. Later that day, an undercover cop spotted her stolen vehicle, backed into a parking spot, and kept an eye out on the car. And not long after watching the car, he saw the Jerry is Robinson and 16 year old Boston Richie hop in the stolen car and drive off. The police would keep an eye out and spot the car for a second time, but now it was three guys inside it. A few hours later, another police officer saw the three guys in the stolen car walking away from a dead end street. He located the stolen car as another officer arrived on the scene where he saw Boston Richie walking away from the other two guys. So the police went out and detained Richie. Richie agreed to answer questions and told the police he was driving a stolen vehicle. So the police transported Richie to the police station for more questioning. The other officers located the other two guys who were in the car with Richie, but neither of them would make any statement to the police. Police later found the keys that belonged to the stolen car and the stolen revolver in a garbage can. Investigators questioned Richie at the police station and Richie agreed to answer more questions, telling the police that he had stolen the vehicle with three other guys. But he only knew one of the guys by name and told the police the guy's name was George. Richie also said George told him that the Honda had the keys inside of it, so they took the car between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m driving it around the city until 7 a.m. Richie also told police that the other two guys knew that the car was stolen, which is why they came to his house several times that day. Richie continued by letting police know that the stolen revolver didn't belong to him, and since Richie and his friends all knew the car was stolen, they were all charged with grand theft of a motor vehicle. And due to Boston Richie telling the police that the car was stolen multiple times, this is what also made them arrest and charge the other two guys with the GTA. And after the news broke going viral saying Boston Richie snitched, he responded on Instagram by posting pictures of him holding a quarter million dollars, saying how they hate on him and he didn't snitch. And after he posted the money, fans started saying that confirmed that he snitched. That would have been the last thing I would have done. To be honest, I would have just fell back. News also spread that Boston Richie was no longer going on tour with Future, and fans quickly assumed that Future took him off the tour after Richie's paperwork got revealed. But he instantly addressed these rumors saying, I look like getting took off the tour. I'm locked in getting this music in order for this album. Now let's move on to a Chicago rapper known as FBG Butter, because Butter was really close with another Chicago rapper named Lil J, since they were in the same gang. They would even go on drills together, but one night things would go south because J, Butter, and another one of their gang members named Trub went to buy drugs from a dude named Jay the Kid. It ain't clear what exactly went down, but an argument broke out, so J, Butter, and Trub left. And instead of finding a new plug to buy from, they went to Trub's girlfriend's house and picked up some guns. Then the three of them went back to Jay the Kid's place, where they ended up getting into a shootout. Trub and Jada Kid both got hit. Trub later died while Jada Kid recovered in the hospital. Jada Kid got off on self-defense, but Lil J and Butter were both charged with murder, even though they weren't the ones who shot him. Police determined that they were why Trub was involved in the altercation, and Butter and Jay were supposed to be holding it down together. But then Jay leaked photos of Butter signing paperwork in an interrogation room, but denied ever signing anything. But he did get out of prison early, which supported the rumors. Butter cut ties with Lil Jay, and the two of them have been beefing ever since. Jay ended up beating the murder charge for Trub's death, but then he got sentenced to 14 years for conspiracy to commit murder and intent to kill and injure for trying to take out Jay the Kid. And one week after Lil Jay got released from serving seven years in prison, he dropped a track named First Day Clout. And in the song, he took shots at FBG Butter for snitching on him, saying, Shorty snitched and moved out of town. He go that black and white, gave statement and plea agreements. That told I had to fight for my life. Lil J did an interview with Say Cheese TV after he got out, explaining how Butter also got Lil J's mom sentenced to three years in prison. He gets out four years earlier than you, right? Yeah, he took a, he took a plea deal to testify against me for that. I'm about to put that out there soon too. I mean, that, that paperwork, I still got that. You got my OG locked up over there. And after Jay revealed all that information, Butter did an interview with Cam Capone News to tell his side of the story. And but in real life, he told on himself. Oh, bro, <laughs> my told on himself. Don't make, don't make it seem like I told on you. Cause if I told on you, then he wouldn't be home right now. He also spoke about the paperwork that Lil Jay leaked. Okay, now there was some paperwork that popped up on the internet. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that paperwork, that fake, man. Oh, bro, look at look that up. 
Florida rapper Spot Him Got Him also got exposed for snitching on his friends not too long ago. Because back in May 2018, Jacksonville police were patrolling Juan Creef Road due to the recent violent crime in the city. And while patrolling, officers saw a white Honda matching the description of a stolen vehicle parked in someone's yard. Officers then contacted the people who lived at the house. She allowed YNR Mookie to live there alone. They also let the police know they were unaware of any illegal activity on the property. Officers then requested consent to search the house, and the owner gave them permission. So the police went and knocked on the door, and Spottam and Mookie both came to the door, leaving the house while the police searched the crib. Police found two handguns in the bathroom inside the toilet's water tank, along with a bag of weed. They also found a bag full of bullets in the living room, and a bag with a bunch of pills. When questioned, Mookie didn't say anything, but Spottam provided the police with a statement. Spottam told police he arrived at the house at 9 p.m., stated that he was sleeping on the couch when the police light shined through the window. Spottam continued saying that Mookie began pacing around and walking to his bedroom, then came out with items in his hand with the t-shirt covering them. Officers asked Spottam if he knew what the items were that Mookie had in his shirt, and he said a pole. Spottam also told officers that Mookie was the only one to use the bathroom before the police arrived. Spottam stated that the bag of bullets was his, and when questioned about the pills, he said he didn't know where the drugs came from. Spottam also let the police know that he got the bullets by stealing them from Dick's Sporting Goods. So police ended up arresting Mookie, and he was charged with possession of a weapon by a delinquent and armed possession of marijuana with intent to sell. And due to Spottam cooperating with the police, he got off free without any charges. And they determined that Mookie was the one who hid all the items before they performed the search warrant. Mookie beat the case since the state didn't file charges in time. But if the case made it to trial, Spottam's statement would have been used against Mookie. And after the paperwork went viral, rappers started speaking on it. And terrible, man. Every day sleep with a bar. Man. And get what this man said. I'm finna show y'all exactly what this man said. This man said his mama told. They say spot him, got him on rat. <laughs> and in an interview with Say Cheese, Spot him said one of Mookie's homeboys leaked that paperwork since he was mad. Who leaked that that uh the statement? I don't know. Like it was it was one of my one of my home one of my little homeboys I was with. He Mookie. He was on some mad little hate. I don't know. And Kodak and Fulio aren't the only ones who fell away after the news broke out. Because Lil Dirk also sent Spottam Got Him his $100,000 back after he saw the news since he didn't want to be on the song with Spottam after finding out he snitched. And subscribe to the channel before we move on. But Dirk also took shots at 6ix9ine for snitching. Because 6ix9ine is one of the most famous snitches in the world. And in 2018, 6ix9ine and his manager Shoddy were arrested along with other 9 trade Bloods on federal racketeering and weapons charges. And not long after being locked up, 6ix9ine pleaded guilty to the 9 charges they had on him and was facing a mandatory sentence of 47 years. But not long after hearing that news, a document was revealed showing that 6ix9ine provided legal testimony that led to an investigation on the other members in the game. Gang. And due to 6 9 snitching, his sentence was cut down to two years while all the other members still are in jail. And after rappers found out that he snitched, they started going crazy, dissing him in songs and all. Because on Laugh Now, I'll Cry Later, Lil Dirk said, Can you not play that little boy in the club? Because we do not listen to rats. Taking a shot at 6 9 for snitching. But 6 9 isn't the only rapper who snitched on his own gang. Since O Block, Big Mike did the same thing and snitched on King Von. Because in 2014, Vine was at a house party, and during the party, a dude named Malcolm Stuckey and some of his bros were trying to scare Vine by mean mugging him. But since Vine was solo, he decided not to try anything and left to recruit backup from Big Mike. So once Vine and Mike saw Malcolm hanging out by the porch, they opened fire. Unfortunately, Malcolm was killed in the shooting and several of his friends were wounded trying to escape. Not long after the incident, Vine and Mike were arrested and charged with one count of murder and two counts of attempted murder. So Mike and Vine would go on to fight this case over the next few years. And things weren't going the best for King Vine. Since Mike had agreed to testify that Vine was the one who fired the shot that ended Malcolm's life. And at the last minute, Big Mike tried to change his mind and didn't want to take the stand when the trial took place. No other witnesses came to testify either, so the prosecutors didn't have much evidence to tie to Vine. So Vine was later acquitted of the charges, and due to Big Mike refusing to point at Vine during the trial, he was sentenced to 28 years. And if Mike never agreed to testify at first, he wouldn't have gotten sentenced either. Now let's move on to Pop Hunter, because after news came out that he snitched, his career took a turn for the worst because paperwork revealed that in 2015, 14-year-old Pop was the witness in the homicide case where another 14-year-old named Deval DeShields was shot and killed. And his paperwork revealed that Pop was very cooperative with the police, revealing everything to them, which led Demetrius Brown to get sentenced to 40 years in prison. And not long after the paperwork went viral, Pop went on Instagram saying the paperwork was fake. 
Pop later did an interview with DJ Academics, saying he was a kid and should be excused for his statements. I was a kid, bro. Ain't no kid supposed to go through no like that, bro. I seen some that a kid wasn't supposed to see. But rappers weren't feeling the same way. Because after Lil Uzi found out about the news, he tweeted, Need my verse back. That song, Real Street, Stick to the Code. Lil TJ also spoke on the situation, saying he did a bid at 14 years old, and that it's no excuse to snitch if you say you're in the streets. Jaco the Ruler also went on Instagram and spoke on the situation. Snitch is not cool. I don't give a if you snitch when you was 10 years old. I don't give a if you snitch when you was 30. Now let's move on to Gunna, because after Gunna got released from jail, everyone was excited. But their emotions quickly turned after the media found out that he took a deal to get released called an Alfred plea. After his release, Gunna and his team instantly released statements where he explained how he wasn't switching on the crew and working with the police. But things said otherwise when a video was leaked of Gunna telling a prosecutor that YSL is a gang. During the hearing, the prosecutor also asked him a question about him and Young Thug in the car. And Gunna said, Yes, After this video leaked, fans and other artists were pissed since Gunna was making things worse when he answered these questions. Lil Durk even went on to diss Gunna in a leaked snippet where he says, What happened to Virgil? He probably gonna tell. And he said it that way since he has a song with Gunna named What Happened to Virgil. But Dirk wasn't the only rapper who dissed Gunna for taking a plea. So click this video to see what rappers really think of Gunna.